Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. My name is Tim Stenevec. I'm an anchor at Bloomberg Quick Take, also Bloomberg Business Week Radio. Very pleased right now to be joined by Zach Prince. He's the founder and CEO of BlockFi. Zach, uh, how are you doing this morning? Doing great. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, well, thanks so much for joining us. Look, I want to talk about the BlockFi Rewards credit card that offers Bitcoin as a reward in just a second. But first, not everyone who's tuning in right now might be familiar with what BlockFi does. So just take us back about five years ago before you started BlockFi uh, with your co-founder and give us an idea of, of what the genesis was. What made you start it? Yeah, sure. So Flory and I worked together in the uh, online lending sector, and um, I started personally investing in cryptocurrency back in 2015. And in early 2017, it became clear that uh, this asset class had legs. It was going to become mainstream. And just like other asset classes, there was going to be a need for financial services, uh, debt and credit products. And, and that's where BlockFi really uh, started and cut our teeth. Um, we were the first company to make it possible for folks to borrow dollars with their Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies as collateral. First company to get licensed for that in the US to raise institutional capital for those making those types of loans. And from that starting point, we've uh, rapidly expanded our product suite for both retail investors and institutional market participants. And today, on the retail side of our platform, we offer that loan product, we offer an interest account, where folks can earn a yield on their cryptocurrency or stablecoin holdings. Uh, we have trading where you can buy and sell assets. And then the newest and, and most exciting product from my point of view, which I'm a massive fan of, is our, our Bitcoin rewards credit card, where instead of earning airline miles or cash back, the rewards currency is Bitcoin. So you're getting Bitcoin back on every transaction. Okay, more on that in just a second. But to contextualize the size of how much you've grown, uh, just from a couple employees a few years ago, you now have 850 employees revenue last year about 65 million what's it looking like for this year yeah so we're um we're, we're on track for around 475 million in gross revenue this year <clears throat> the company uh has grown from you know four years ago nothing but but today we we service over half a million retail accounts 200 institutional clients we have over 15 billion dollars in client assets on our platform um and uh, and things aren't uh, aren't slowing down. Uh, profitability yet? Uh, not profitable yet. We're still you know focused on growth and reinvesting and building new products and, and giving our clients uh, you know as many rewards and and kind of wealth generating uh, incentives as as we possibly can. So um, uh, we we could be profitable uh, as early as next year, but but we're still primarily focused on growth. And right now, evaluation, uh, according to your last raise, between four and five billion, right? Yeah, that's right. And in, in our last round of uh, of funding, we were we were valued at about four and a half billion. Okay, so let's talk about one of those consumer products that you offer, the one you're really excited about, the Bitcoin Rewards credit card. It's been about a year since you announced that, about four months since you started offering it. Uh, most recently, at the end of October, you said more than sixty thousand total card holders. You've paid out over one hundred and twenty four. Bitcoin, which is more than seven million dollars at today's levels. What do you know about the people who are using the card right now? Sure. So um, the people that are using the card are a mix of cryptocurrency enthusiasts who are always looking for more ways to uh, earn Bitcoin um, and and keep growing their you know uh, stack of, of cryptocurrencies. But we've also seen uh, a really interesting cohort of folks that, that we refer to internally as crypto curious people. Um, these tend for us to be uh, high earners working in the financial or, or technology industry. Uh, they're kind of in a U shape geographically in the US and in major cities on the coasts of uh, California or the East Coast or Texas or Florida. Um, they skew younger and uh, and they spend a lot on credit cards. So, you know, uh, the average spend that we're seeing on BlockFi cards right now is around $5,000 a month. Compare that to, you know, Amex or Visa uh, premium cards that are more in the uh, two to two to 2,500 range per month. So we've got a young, smart, wealthy, uh, you know, really excited uh, consumer base. And, and one of the things we're going to be rolling out next year that I'm really excited about is uh, is merchant offers where uh, retailers um, and other types of firms that want to uh, advertise and, and promote their products to this incredibly high value uh, segment of customers that use the BlockFi card, they'll be able to do that through offering uh, incentives um, where, you know, 
right now, it, the base rate is 1.5% Bitcoin back on every transaction. In your first 90 days, you're in 3.5%. But we'll have some really exciting stuff coming out early next year where at select merchants or uh, you know, for select products, you'll get even higher rates than that. Here's the thing, though. You live in New York. I live in New York. We can't actually get this card right now. It's not available in New York. Yeah, so the, so the credit card is available in, in 49 out of uh, the 50 states uh, in the U.S. New York is, is the only one where it's not currently available. What are the conversations you're having with regulators to make it available to New Yorkers? I imagine it's a, it, that's an audience, that's a customer base you want to have. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I can't comment too much on uh, the the ongoing dialogue that that we're having at BlockFi with a number of regulators, uh, you know, in New York uh, included in that. Um, but but I think we're optimistic that uh, the card and other products on our platform will be available in New York uh, sometime next year. Okay. So do you, first half, second half, what do you think? 50-50. 50-50 chance. Okay. Could, could be either one. 20, 20, Neither 22. would surprise me. Neither would surprise hey, I'm really me. Interested, I'm really interested in what you said about the crypto curious who come to BlockFi through the rewards credit card. Are you seeing the credit card as kind of like a, you know, for lack of a better term, a gateway drug to get people into the BlockFi platform and get people into cryptocurrency who aren't familiar with it or don't use other platforms? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we think of our kind of position in the market when compared to uh, most of the other large cryptocurrency companies, which are exchanges. We think of ourselves as a bit more of a wealth management type of platform where we want to be offering a suite of products to folks that are easy to use, that are really valuable for them to use. Um, and each product uh, can be the hook and, and the first kind of acquisition of a customer in and of itself. The credit card is just the newest um, iteration of that. But but yes, absolutely. The, the behavior that we typically see um, is someone will start with the credit card or start with our interest account product. And then over time, they'll also be trading or potentially taking out a loan. Uh, and we really want to build that um, high level of engagement with our clients. And, and we hope that uh, you know, they'll see a lot of value out of multiple products that we already have and, and products that we're launching in the future. In conversations that I had with you and your team ahead of, of this conversation today, I learned that about 5% of your revenue comes from the credit card right now. How do you want that to grow? Uh, I think, um, you know, payments as a category. So the credit card is our, is our first product in the payments category. Uh, we expect that to be 10 to 15% of revenue by the end of next year and, and close to 30% uh, of our overall revenue by the end of next year. Uh, by the end of next wow. year, we'll likely also have uh, a debit card uh, available um, and more payment options, especially outside the U.S. Uh, you know, today for our U.S. clients, they can send money to and from their bank account and their BlockFi account. But for our clients outside the U.S., uh, which is about 30% of our client base, they're still reliant on cryptocurrency payment rails only. So they can send us Bitcoin, Ethereum, stable coins, but but they can't send us money from their traditional bank account yet. And so uh, payments is a big growth uh, area for us, both in terms of products and, and features. What about specifically when it comes to the pipeline around the credit card? How do you see that product evolving? Do you see yourself offering a credit card with a different type of cryptocurrency reward? Yeah, so uh, before the end of this year, we'll, we'll uh, give folks the option to flex uh, their credit card rewards. We currently have that available in our interest account where you can deposit Bitcoin and flex your interest that you're earning into stable coins or vice versa. Um, and we'll be launching that same type of feature for the credit card before the end of this year. So you'll be able to uh, earn the rewards in Ethereum or uh, Uniswap or any of the other cryptocurrencies that are supported on our platform. And then we have a lot of other really exciting things uh, in terms of enhancements to the credit card products that we're uh, expecting to roll out. So we'll be launching a roundup feature where folks can round up all their transactions each month to the nearest dollar and then have that uh, incremental amount also be converted into Bitcoin. We'll be enabling folks to pay off their credit card bill with their stablecoin balance on BlockFi. And then the thing mm -hmm. I touched on earlier, uh, card linked offers where you'll earn uh, a higher rewards rate uh, at select premium uh, merchants. Are people running a balance on these cards or are they paying them off each month? Paying them off each month. We're, this is a, this is a, a premium card. We, we see uh, very, very low 
rates of, of folks carrying a balance. Um, folks are setting up auto pay. Uh, they're not getting charged any interest. They, they pay their bill on time. Um, and, and so, uh, yeah, there's, there's not a lot of balances being carried uh, month to month whatsoever. Okay, so it's clear the the demographic of the cardholders here. What are you thinking about when it comes to offering a credit card that isn't at such a premium level? Is that something you're thinking about right now? Yeah, so I think um, not over the next six months, but certainly over the next couple of years, we'll start to uh, create credit card segments. Um, you see this with like you know airline cards, for example, where you have the elite super premium card, maybe there's a, a platinum card, a gold card, and a silver card. Um, we'll start to do that on the credit side, but we'll also launch a debit card product uh, that will be available you know, regardless of folks' uh, credit scores, and we'll also earn uh, cryptocurrency rewards based on how much uh, you spend on it. How do you do that? Because typically you don't have rewards associated with debit cards to the same extent that you do with credit cards. Yeah, you, you've seen this a little bit, uh, you know, from folks like uh, Coinbase and, and Crypto.com with their debit card offerings. Um, there was a uh, legislation passed uh, that enabled smaller banks to charge high interchange rates, even on debit cards. And a lot of fintech companies and cryptocurrency companies have, have partnered with those types of banks to issue debit cards mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, do earn rewards. But but I agree with you. It's, it's not the norm. Uh, across the entire debit card landscape. Hey, let's talk about the BlockFi interest account because I know there's a, a lot of interest around there, no pun intended. A handful of states though, New Jersey, Texas, Alabama, Vermont, Kentucky, they're essentially saying that this product that you offer to consumers is illegal, saying you're offering unregistered securities. You got a cease and desist from New Jersey and Kentucky. Give us an update on what's happening there. Yeah, so we're, um, we're, we're continuing to have uh, very productive conversations with regulators. A lot of this is a matter of education, and there's not necessarily precedent for financial services products on, you know, cryptocurrencies. And so there's a lot of back and forth. From the beginning of creating BlockFi, we've, we've strived to be uh, compliant uh, with all U.S. regulations. We've been a, a leader in terms of uh, getting certain licenses for certain activities. We've been doing KYC and AML on every customer on our platform uh, from day one, and, and we're going to continue to have that as our focus. Um, uh, you know, there were some uh, orders this summer, uh, which were originally set to be effective this summer, and, and what they contemplated was BlockFi stopping to sign up new clients into our interest account product. Um, New Jersey being uh, kind of mo the most notable C and D and the other states being uh, requests for hearings or, or requests for information type of notices. Um, uh, as of now, the, the New Jersey C and D has, uh, the effective date has been delayed to December 1st. So, you know, our, our clients have not experienced uh, any change in, in the availability of uh, our current products or their ability to sign up for those. Um, but it is an ongoing conversation uh, and, and we'll hope to you know, as soon as we can share information with publicly about what exactly we're talking about, what changes may happen in terms of the regulatory status of certain products or their availability. What would happen if federal regulators or state regulators essentially said that you were offering securities? Would would you have to change your business model? Um, it, it depends on the details. Uh, it, it depends on the details of, of uh, you know, what that means. There's um, precedent in the cryptocurrency industry for things to uh, have been a security at one point and then not be a security at a later point. There's precedent for uh, companies that you know issued tokens via an ICO uh, to go through enforcement actions, but but still have uh, and, and reach a settlement, but but still have those tokens be available and, and the blockchain be operational in the marketplace. So I think there's a wide spectrum. I, I think we're feeling optimistic that. We'll be able to keep, you know, adding the value and offering the products for our clients that uh, that they know and love and, and really uh, enjoy and have been very financially beneficial to them. Um, but it's an ongoing conversation, and I don't want to, uh, you know, pontificate too much on where we're going to land yeah. before we're in a place we're able to share. Well, on a big picture level, how are you thinking about conversations with state regulators versus conversations with the SEC on the federal level? Like, how would you characterize the different discussions that you're having? Yeah, on a, on a big picture level, if you zoom out, I think that um, it's a, a real opportunity for the industry 
uh, that these conversations are, are starting to happen. And ultimately, it's an indication of the fact that this industry has grown uh, enough in terms of size um, that uh, these conversations uh, have to happen. So it's, it's kind of a marker of success in some ways. And mm -hmm. um, I, think it, I think it really is a, a big education battle. Uh, there's a, a very diverse spectrum of, of knowledge around how cryptocurrencies work, what cryptocurrency companies are doing uh, across the political landscape. Um, I think that uh, you know there's a diversity of opinions at the state level, uh, and any time you have a diversity of opinions at the state level, it, it's helpful to have uh, clarity at the federal level. And I think that um, uh, the current administration, through various branches of government, is starting to work towards that right now. And ultimately, regardless of, of what that clarity ends up being, um, when we look back a few years uh, down the road from now, when we look back at this point in time, I think we'll say it was very valuable for the industry uh, that that clarity was um, achieved. And that clarity enabled uh, further growth uh, across a lot of different products and service categories, including ones that BlockFi operates in. Hey, you and I were talking off camera a little bit about how much you love New York and you love being here. I'm wondering, though, if we see any sort of regulatory action in, in states or on the federal level, if it would cause you to think about leaving the United States and setting up shop in another country. Look, I think um, I think you see American companies uh, for, for a variety of reasons, uh, both inside and outside of financial services have uh, you know, subsidiaries or, or separate branches uh, outside the U.S., whether that's for tax purposes or for, you know, distribution purposes um, uh, or simply because they're, you know, targeting uh, international markets for their products and services. And um, we, we already have uh, entities outside the U.S. Uh, at, at BlockFi in a couple of jurisdictions. Um, I expect that our, you know, regulatory footprint is only going to uh, continue uh, to grow. Um, but I don't anticipate at this time that there's going to be some, you know, hard switch uh, for us or, or for others that already are, you know, headquartered, domiciled in the U.S., um, leaving uh, completely the U.S. market. I, I think that um, cryptocurrency companies, regulators, and, and American citizens are all in theory aligned around the fact that just like the internet, we want the big companies in this innovative technology sector to be based here. It, it's great for our economy. Uh, it's great for our national security. Uh, it's great for um, our soft power around the world. Uh, and, and so while there are outstanding questions around the implementation of specific regulations and how they apply to this sector, uh, I, I think we'll move towards um, an outcome similar to that uh, of the internet where we want the biggest companies to, to be in the US um, and we want to facilitate Zach, that. Zach, if you, if you go to BlockFi.com right now, there's a yellow banner at the top that provides customers with an update about regulatory actions that are happening in states or ongoing in states. Is there anything, though, on the regulatory level happening at the federal level? Any investigations coming from the federal level that we should know about? Nothing that I can comment on at this time. Okay. Hey, I want to talk about Newberger Berman and this partnership that's happening. Um, you announced it last month. It's a joint venture uh, that you're going to, quote, develop and distribute a series <clears throat> of crypto asset management products and strategies. What does that mean? Yeah, so um, we're, we're really excited about the partnership with Newberger Berman. Uh, the impetus uh, or one of the you know initial uh, things that was exciting about the partnership was distribution for a product of ours that already exists. Uh, it's the BlockFi uh, Bitcoin Trust. Um, it'll start publicly trading probably sometime in the first half of next year. Uh, it has 100 million in AUM uh, today. Um, so that product has gone into this JV with, with New Burger Berman. But uh, what we're most excited about is the pipeline of products uh, that we intend to launch together through the partnership, which will um, include publicly traded kind of, uh, you know, beta exposure uh, type products, whether that's a futures ETF or, or spot ETFs uh, when those are um, you know, available to be uh, traded and, and get approved from the SEC, uh, or whether it's privately traded thematic exposure types of products. So think about mm. you know, a DeFi fund, 
uh, for example, that's rebalanced regularly and you know give folks gives institutions exposure to um, not just Bitcoin, which uh, obviously we've made a ton of progress on and is, in my opinion, kind of a no brainer at this point to have an allocation to, uh, but also uh, stuff that's more on the on the cutting edge. Um, and uh, we'll be we'll be making announcements uh, really regularly over the next 12 months around what that product pipeline looks like and when certain things will be live. So why a joint venture rather than just adding it as your own product? Why did you need Newberger Berman? Yeah, so so uh, Newberger Berman is a is a very large, you know, uh, 420 plus billion in, in AUM asset management firm. They have a global sales team of over a thousand investment professionals and phenomenal relationships with with LPs uh, and. Uh, distribution sources for you know a variety of of products, and they're a trusted brand with with a great history of uh, delivering value for their clients. And we felt that combining that with BlockFi's expertise in cryptocurrency markets and and BlockFi's operational and technical capabilities um, to you know facilitate uh, investments or to facilitate investment strategies in this market uh, would make both of us. Uh, you know, stronger and, and position these products for scale and success. Zach, I want to end with just helping with you helping us think about where you think we are when it comes to cryptocurrency and financial innovation. So if we think about equities and fixed income and where we are with those asset classes in terms of, of fully developed, where are we in the life cycle of, of cryptocurrency right now? We're still in the early days. We're still in the very early like days early. in terms of, uh, you know, the 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 not the earliest adopter, but kind of like the early majority part of the uh, you know the S curve of of adoption. Um, so so I think we're still in the in the early majority phase. Um, we're not fully mainstream yet. There are still really exciting things happening for. The distribution of, uh, you know, Bitcoin and the, and the, you know, uh, productization of Bitcoin and connection of Bitcoin into the traditional financial markets, um, with things like Ethereum and Solana and other smart contract-based, uh, you know, blockchain platforms. We're still in the early days of um, seeing applications be built on top of those and generate adoption, uh, and we're still in the early days of seeing traditional assets be tokenized. Uh, and, and moving around on, you know, blockchain rails. Um, and the biggest thing that's uh, happened there to date has been stable coins. Uh, yeah. and, and I expect a lot of growth there, but um, we'll see that with other assets too. So the dollar is just the first thing that's, uh, you know, achieved a lot of success and adoption being uh, tokenized. But, but I think that will happen with other assets as well. Zach Prince, founder and CEO of BlockFi. Zach, a great conversation. Thank you so much for joining us. Really Thanks appreciate it.